Now we're going to switch gears because this is the first bit of exciting news that's been mm -hmm. happening here in the Napa Valley where we're based, um, but also affects all of you all around the country. Uh, we have Premier Week going on here in Napa. And Premier Week is huge. It's huge for the trade in particular because this is where they get first crack at one of a kind uh, wine lots that they will probably never get again. And then they get to bring those back and share them with some of you, <laughs> their customers, um, people visiting their restaurants um, and whatnot. And so with us here today, as I mentioned earlier, we have Steve Reynolds. And Steve is the chairman of this year's premier Napa Valley event put on by the Napa Valley Vintners. And so tell us a little bit about what's going on during Premier Week. Well, to me, in, in my little industry, this is probably one of the most important possible weeks um, in coming to Napa Valley you know, for, for the wine industry. Um, we've got a great auction that comes up in June, which is um, anyone can come, consumers. It's a beautiful event. But this is specifically targeted at the trade. Yeah. So um, it's an opportunity. You know, we make some fantastic wines, Harlan, Screaming Eagles, Reynolds. <laughs> um, Shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> Still brought a trail 32 no, <laughs> But uh, you know, these are exactly what you described. These are these are made once. There's one opportunity to buy these wines. We do not make them for anyone else. It's such a wonderful thing that Napa shares, and it's a it's a kind of a hidden secret. So do you can you share with us what some of these amazing gems are like, or you know, give us a few hints as to what's going to go on the auction block this week? Well, you know, there's going to be about 210 auction lots, give or take. Okay. I'm not sure where it locked up. And you have them memorized, right? <laughs> I do. Starting alphabetically, we, uh, Alpha Omega. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't know all the vendors um, that are going to be participating, the wineries, but, uh, you know, it's uh, over half of our membership participate. Yeah. And um, it's just so special. Pretty much starting tonight, um, wineries are hosting these wonderful little parties. And so these guys come from everywhere, China, Japan, you know, all over the place. And we throw these lavish parties. Sounds awesome. Ours is tomorrow night. <laughs> I invited? can't tell you yeah. where. Can we come? <laughs> yeah. We're going to crash. But We're some wineries do yeah, things like <laughs> rent a theater yeah. we, with Rocky Horror Picture Show, with 10 Ooh, Broadway fun. actors coming, with 20 wineries pouring wines. I know. So you have another <laughs> reason why you want to enter the beverage trade, as we exactly. said earlier. <laughs> is you get to do these great things. So um, what's neat is, you know, all of these wineries that are participating in our party, which is the, uh, the theater thing tomorrow night, um, you know, 20 great wineries pouring a one-of-a-kind wine that you'll never get to try again. I don't care if you're on Screaming Eagles list. Um, I mean, there's still whatever, 1,000, 1,200. I don't know if they count as it. This is five cases, not 1,200. Wow. So you five own this cases. wine. You solely own this. It's, it's five, 10, or 20 cases. Let me see. I think we Fantastic. have uh, an example. So, Do we have an example here? Did you present? No, you're going to present it. I'm well, you know, open it. This, oh. is, this is uh, we need another glass. in this, know, we need in this we need, lovely we bottle example. right here, which is really just a Reynolds mock-up. <laughs> um, we're asked to, because uh, we can't transport a barrel into the CIA where the auction will be on Saturday. Here, can I so take we, this and hold this for the camera so that we can get a, a close-up? So this is our little auction lot. Each winery is asked to name the wine each year, something unique and different. Um, when you're the chair, you are the first auction item for the year. So I put a lot of thought into the name of this. It's called One. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but to, to tell you, like last year, our auction lot was called the Prize Fighter. We've had Uber Juice. Sure. Um, so we've done some fun things, and um, and that's really what this is all about. I think this really gets back to the grassroots of Napa Valley, and Absolutely. really what the vendors, you know, was built from. And let's talk about that a little bit. Um, what year is this for this event? Do you know how many years they've been doing it now? Seventeen to twenty. I should somewhere know. I should know that. More than fifteen would, yeah, years. Yeah, that way. yeah, somewhere in there. Um, I think it's it, it's been out close to twenty years. And really, what the vintners was started to do was actually have a large voice for a lot of small wineries mm -hmm. because we could not compete on a national level with some of the larger countries like France. So a lot of small vintners really got together and formed this organization. And this one event um, actually funds the Napa Valley vintners. Right. So. Um, 
it, some it, people it's think the, it's the main event that raises all the money for the promotion and you know putting right. forth put, everything about to let the vendors run themselves because right. I tell you what, all of the other events, which there are so many, um, are all charitable. Right. But if you can't have a staff and you can't, you don't have a facility, none of that exists. So a lot of people are like, well, this really isn't charitable. Um, quite honestly, I feel this is the most important one. Of course. And yeah. on top of it, um, our sommelier this evening, Didier yeah. Lusso. Yeah. Yeah. Messy. Messy. Did I do that right? Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Clark. It's <laughs> 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 uh, can't send it back, right? Um, so, uh, you know, really what, uh, what I love about this event is these are our trades. Um, they're people that come from the best palettes in the world. We've got master sommeliers attending, mm -hmm. restaurant tours, owner of distributorships, right. um, collectors. Um, you need to have a license, a liquor license, or some form of ability to buy the product sure. legally. Um, and that it's it's a little bit of a selection because it is invitation only. Okay. So uh, it's 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 definitely a kind of a high end event, and Napa Valley is just the prime spot for it. And you have people, you, you mentioned several different types of people that come to attend, but they're from all over the world as well, correct? They are. And uh, usually, like like any great event, um, you have one select person and the entourage. Comes with them. <laughs> so it, it does end up being quite the party out here. And um, so, um, you know, it's really the winery's job to try to um, get the attention of these people. Sure. And, you know, let's face it, I could travel for 10 years to try to get to get in front of these 1500 buyers and it would never happen. Right. I have, I have three or four days that they're in my hometown hmm. and able to actually uh, get in front of them or have them stop by the winery, go to one of these events. Um, it's so fun. So on Saturday yeah. um, is when the actual auction is. Um, it and, starts and it will be taking place where? At the Culinary Institute of America up in at uh, Greystone in St. Helena. Great. And um, just a beautiful, beautiful setting. Um, so the auction basically starts and allows some of the previous bidders in early. So they get the first little look, not that they haven't been tasting some of our samples and wares ahead of time. <laughs> and actually, we should taste Yes, cheers. Should we I have? would love to. So cheers. Cheers. Exactly. Yeah. And so this is, about this. Yeah, this, yeah. I'll, I'll digress here just for a sec. This is a Stag's Leap 100% wine, which is a district in Napa, one of my favorite growing districts. We have a lovely vineyard mm -hmm. called the Annapurna Vineyard. So this is a uh, Cabernet and Merlot from Annapurna, but we also have from the former Stelsner uh, winery and vineyards, um, we have some Cabernet Franc. So wow. this is a wine that we've put together that we don't sell to the public, but is just a unique blend specifically for these buyers. Hmm. This I is mean, incredible. How many cases of that are you making? Well, I'm not sure if it's mandatory or just an unspoken rule, but 20 cases for the chair is generally customary. Mm -hmm. So, um, which we're, happy, oh, which we're happy to do. So basically a barrel. Yeah. Five cases for me, 20 for them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, but it's wow. Good. This is amazing. It's, Thank it's you. It's really terrific. Is Thank this, you. when you're, you know, sitting down at the beginning of the year, I suppose the beginning of the growing season, thinking ahead to premiere, how do you make a decision as to what wine you're going to make? Well, that, that's actually a good question because some years it's the week before and you rally the troops to throw something together <laughs> with a lot of thought, intense work by cramming for an exam. Other years you are thinking ahead of time, but typically what's nice about it is usually um, the timing is good because we will have just finished harvest and kind of tucked away this year's grapes. Right. And it's time to kind of go back and look at what you did yes, mm -hmm. last year that's been sitting there. And the timing's kind of good because then as you're doing what's called racking, where you're kind of cleaning your wines up from the year before a little bit, um, we start to go through and taste some of the barrels. And mm -hmm. this is an opportunity then for your winemaking staff to kind of sort through what you have. And all of a sudden, you know, you could taste 60, 70 barrels of a lot. And there's always one or two little shining stars. It's just something about yeah. that one barrel that's very unique and different. So we start to thin the herd, so to speak, right? And we'll mark on what we like. And that's really what happens is that then those barrels get separated off. And maybe you end up with 10 barrels in a room that are all little shining stars on their own. And we start to create a wine. And wow. that's really our technique. I'm not sure what everybody else does, but that's sort of how we started out. Sure. Now tell us about the label too, because it's my understanding, I, are all the labels for Premier specially made or? Well, they are, you know, this is actually not the label. 
thinners, just know I'm not plugging this label <laughs> right here. Um, there is a specific label that the vintners have uh, legally had approved, mm -hmm. and um, every label is signed by the winemaker. Wow. Bottle, so you know, like bottle a, one of 20, bottle yeah. two of... So it's like a piece of fine art. Very you know, much so. It's like so. getting a painting and Very getting a signed so. bottle. And what's neat, too, is the write-up. And, you know, I'll go back to the event on Saturday is, uh, you know, the, the uh, I think I left off right where the VIPs get to come in for about an hour. Then the room starts to fill up with everybody. And there are, you know, 200, 210 stations around a room where you get to come taste these wines from everyone you could ever imagine. You know, wow. some of the best, just incredible. And the winemakers and the owners themselves are there. And uh, it ends up being just a fantastic morning. They ring a bell. Yes. And try to shuffle people upstairs to get a little food in them. And then I think about one o'clock, um, the gavel goes down and it's a little, literally, it's just like, you know, in Texas, some, hey, <laughs> <laughs> did they do that? Oh, uh, I have to do that. I, uh, <laughs> I do that after too many glasses. Obviously, I don't know if that job exists in here, but I wouldn't have had it, obviously. So. <laughs> But um, it's a, yeah, so that's cool. an auctioneer. I don't know if we have an auctioneer. <laughs> sure, exactly. Fritz. Yeah, yeah, right? Fritz would be great. Fritz would be amazing. Yeah. Well, Fritz, uh, be Fritz and Ursula will be okay. the auctioneers again, okay. and which is wonderful, and they've done a great job, and uh, it starts from there. And I think our our record breaking auction lot was two years ago, which was Scarecrow, and I believe it was 125 or 128 thousand, somewhere in that bracket. If I'm off, I apologize. Wow. For five cases. Of yeah. Wow. So I'll let you five break out cases. your calculator or iPhone for that one. Do you think they one? kept that one for themselves? Or do you think they actually uh, shared it with their I believe that went um, to Asia. I'm quite uh -huh. certain that went to Asia. Uh -huh. and, which is wonderful because, you know, um, I think that's the beauty of this, right? Is totally. You never know who's going to buy your auction lot. And as a winemaker, you sit in the room, and I always say the first year I did this, I was more nervous than getting married because you just hope somebody, <laughs> buy it. somebody, and little family, let's start off at 2000, it. and there's dead silence. Somebody just like raise your paddle. So, uh, and you just want to go over and make out with them. You're like, yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, you can, you're so over. I <laughs> love you, man. No, it's a, it's a really, it's a pretty nerve wracking day, but you know what? It's for such a wonderful cause. Uh, the week is just full of so much fun. It's fantastic. That's cool. So, you know, we're listening to this and we're hearing it sold out, but it's my understanding that if you're a member of the trade, you can still get in on an e-auction basis. Is that correct? Um, well, I'm or sure if you're close? like, well, you know, the thing is the e-auction thing, I, I would have to do more homework on that being on almost every board. Um, we tried to, uh, and I keep looking ahead of myself. <laughs> Uh, I'm used to this. Um, you know, we we tried to actually make this more open to people that could not physically attend and have more e-auction things. Um, it really wasn't a, a thing that seemed to gain popularity. Right. So I do believe there is a small amount of it, but I think it has to be done. I'm not sure if it happens live, but right. it happens okay. maybe ahead of time that people have sent in auction requests at certain levels. Right. But like I in other words, you could bid. Yeah. I don't know that they online. have a technology. Okay. But again, I shouldn't be saying <laughs> it's okay. things could have changed since three days ago when I was at my last meeting. So. I, I'm sure if you were really interested in pursuing it, you could go to the Napa Valley Vintner site and, Absolutely. and find out Great more Great website. Very okay. informational. Absolutely. And by the way, it does have all oh, the we parties. Have a question. Oh. We have another we have question. We have a Twitter again. question and it's relating to the parties we mentioned a moment ago. Where are the best parties for people who are avid connoisseurs of the wine business, but they want to enjoy the Premier Napa Valley? Are there any open? I, you know, that's a very good question. Um, majority of the parties, a very good question. Um, majority of the parties are closed parties. Um, there is somewhat of an exclusivity to this and, uh, and kind of rightfully so, because it's, there's a little bit of a pricey situation and people sure. come out and spend you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, you know, I have to kind of go that way. I, I believe that's probably the right thing to do. However, um, there is a Napa Valley Vintner website that uh, does have a calendar of parties that are going on. Um, but I'm not sure, again, if those are not. I know our party is pretty much specifically sure. for people that are attending. For bitter and, uh, trade and, and people media. that are in the trade. And again, you know, a wine shop owner may travel with two or three of their employees. Of course, they're welcome. Right. So, um, well, let's talk a little bit, though, about how people, um, you know, basically everybody else, the rest of us, <laughs> how we might have an opportunity to enjoy these wines. I mean, it's my understanding that, you know, a lot of these folks do bring the 
20 or Bring 50 cases home. of yeah. you know goods home to their their independent retail wine shop or restaurant and um you know they have customers that look forward to trying you know these bottles every year and if they purchase one they have a special party and mm -hmm. and so it's this is you know we're talking about this today because this is not to just talk about oh this is this exclusive thing that you can't go to but to say hey there are opportunities here for you to maybe try these really oh, wow. really unique um, lots. I have to say, Philippe Mocha's picture is in here 10 yeah. different times. Yeah. It's a different picture every time. <laughs> I, That's I, the I just part. was flipping through. The wine yeah, yeah. For well, Philippe, it's trying to find a new picture. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, here, I'll let you flip through, and then you Love can you, pick Philippe, out one that sounds you know, exceptional <laughs> to you and exceptional. share it. Yeah. Share it? I have to share one? You have to share one. Well, you know, is you're, sharing you're, thing? But, you know, yeah, so, no, exactly. <laughs> well, the wines, first of all, what we're trying to do with these campaigns like today is to to raise awareness about the event because you know for a wine steward or someone in charge of a wine program at a country club right they should come out and they should purchase one of these and then they would be on the list or be available and i think that uh, i think that's the key is how to get a hold of these have your local wine shop owner have somebody at a restaurant exactly say i'm interested in these wines would you go out what a lot of people have done is is formed uh, a little consortium of people where 10 people have gone together and everybody's put in X amount, right. the wine shop owner can show up and bid with right. their money. Everybody gets a little piece of the pie. And that's, that's a really that's cool. neat way to do it. Exactly. So. That, that breaks the open opportunity open up to everybody. So that's And you can fantastic. see like the book here is it's, oh. it's so professionally done. The lots, each yeah, winemaker is, has taken the time to write a uh, personal description of the wines and what, what inspired them to write these mm. or make so, these. And, so, and yeah, pick one for us. So read one off. Okay. Can I read, idea. I'll read two. Read two off. Okay. Yeah. Well, because it's very apropos. I think it's it's very apropos. Is that okay? Absolutely. Because I know <laughs> I have had the opportunity to go, which I feel very fortunate about um, the last few years. And this is my favorite. One of my, I'll take the back. One of my favorites because out of a sea of red, there's bubbles. Mm. And it's always something unique to, I mean, this is an amazing bottle, exactly. but it's always of interest. So they have a 1987 sparkling wine, J. Schramm, late disgorged, Napa Valley, um, 60 bottles. And so for me, I was like, oh, bubbles. I get excited. Bubbles. Yeah, absolutely. I like you know, bubbles. There's a little totally. side note that bubbles. there's a small chance <laughs> that, that, that Schramm's right? going to be very involved in this next year. Oh, really? Oh. Not going to let out any oh. cute. Oh. Should we should let him know? Oh, well, he's there. <laughs> Be a replacement for Steve. Uh -oh. <laughs> I, we won't. You didn't hear that here. Didn't this hear it on this. No. Steve over here. Um, okay. Hold and on. another that you were going to, that caught your eye. It caught my eye. Okay. Hold on. The pressure is on. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm feeling should we, should we play the Jeopardy theme okay, right now? Okay. Do it. Do it. Hold on. <laughs> Reynolds is amazing. We're really good. Um, so I mean, Reynolds is amazing. I well, really, let me tell you why you're looking. Yeah, What's please. One is in my write-up, and I. I did a little thing. Don't you please read another one? But I was going to make a joke that do you remember the the movie Talladega Nights, right? Yeah. Well, winemaking obviously is very serious, and you really can't. Very serious. You really because <laughs> you know what? As a joke, right? Because the wine was called One. Right. So obviously the quote from yeah. Bobby. I'm forgetting. Bobby, but yes. whatever. Ricky, Ricky Bobby. Bobby. Thank, Ricky, you. Thank you. Ricky Bobby. The quote from Ricky Bobby. The famous author. Yeah, the famous author Ricky Bobby. If you ain't first, you're last. But oh yeah, I hope that should probably shouldn't go in there. So mine would have been a lot more fun, but I just want you to know, in true Reynolds spirit, it would have been more humorous. But it'll be good because you can. Walk now that you know the truth, that story, this is the stuff that goes in the magazine that see you would have not found had you not gotten the magazine. <laughs> okay, I found one. Oh. And we have to, real quick, I'm just yes. going to recap and thank you for tweeting your questions to us. We but, love uh, that. They are asking and answering their own questions. Aww, <laughs> <that's so sweet. laughs> there was, um, can we buy your wine, Steve? And then, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, unless you are premiere, that's amazing. We're letting it's like you were, we're monitoring. Um, <laughs> we okay, I found one because I am a big fan of Hal Mountain, and um, Chris Carpenter is also one of my favorites, and he has a few lots. And so I really like La Hodex. I think it has this really great timeliness. I mean, it's been around beautiful for a long wines, time. Right. Beautiful wines, and so they have a 2011 Cabernet Sauvignon um, Hal Mountain 60 bottles. So and 111 is a good number too. 
one one one. 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 Right. And Chris is kind of good looking. I'm just Chris saying. <laughs> That's an added uh, bonus. Uh, uh, Chris he come with a lot? is one inch taller than Thomas Magnum. Than uh, with Tom a stash. Tom with a stash. Tom Tom. He's, he's kind of younger yeah. and taller than uh, Tom Tom. And he has been I'm on, just gonna say yes, on, and that's related to the line because I don't know. Magnum rush out. That's the guy. Magnum buyer. Is this like an estrogen? Oh, yeah, he was on the show. Sorry. There's a lot of people here. And I'm sure we're off the air now, right? We are. Okay, so that's people want to speak again or anyone else? No, no, this is good. This is all good. So we're, too. We're, we're super excited. We can't wait to see how much money you guys are going to raise this year. I hope you just blow the roof off of this thing. It'd be wonderful. And, um, and again, um, check out more information at the Napa Valley Vintners website. Um, please be sure to visit um, Reynolds Family Winery. Uh, website as well, ReynoldsFamilyWinery.com. Or just come on by and see us. Exactly. We'll and the um, this and is changing. This is amazing. Maybe if you're lucky, yeah, yeah maybe we'll have like, one of these left over at the winery. I'm like, like I don't know. Five cases. Five cases. Hold on. 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 <laughs> Drink your one. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> I've been enjoying it. <laughs> so before we close, I would yeah. like to say the 2011 vintage, which is majority of these wines that will be auctioned off, um, that vintage particularly has had somewhat of a bad rap. You know, Mother Nature played a little bit with us. Uh, we truly earned our job as winemakers because um, you can't fight Mother Nature. You can do the best you can. Um, but I just kind of like the doctor that sees the common cold 99% of the time, but also once every or 20 the years. Or yeah. the gingivitis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. But recognizes, you know, cancer or leukemia. Sure, and yeah, the one out of, of, you know. And so every once in a while, you've got to do your job. And it's, it's been a tough year, but I think the wines that I've tried from so many wineries are, are stellar. So I do believe that this is going to be a ridiculously wonderful opportunity to buy some great wines. And don't be afraid of the 11 vintage because they'll be great. Well, and that's that's a lesson. That that lesson has come up with previous The other side of media we don't too. care for, but we'll just leave that alone. It would never be in Mountaineer. It would well, not. you can never tell. I mean, sometimes <laughs> the greatest vintages end up being the ones that were panned, like, in the moment. Exactly. Right. You know, as they age. So, it, never say never. That's why wine is a living, breathing thing, right? And it changes Absolutely. all the well, time. Well, it's changing in the glass. I mean, yeah, so from the beginning yeah, to now. Tell me what you're sensing now, I mean, compared to before. It was just opened up, and it's a lot smoother on the finish, and it's just it's just kind of rounded itself out. These it's are just, babies; still has yeah. a year to go. Mm. So, uh, absolutely for a barrel sample, huh? Yeah, it's so beautiful and just velvety in the mouth. Really soft. That vineyard Very plush. soft rock qualities. They call mm -hmm. it. Yeah, what it's great. Bring him on. Hey, come on, yeah. Yeah. come on. Come on. Yeah. Being off the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> what I want to know is say, say it with somebody, a somebody like DDA, come come up. DDA. Uh. So what I want to know is for for people like you know Ashley, I don't, Aaron, I don't know if you've been to Premier before. It's been many years since I've been. I've been, but it's been a long time. Um, you know what are what's one of the most memorable <laughs> moments that you yeah. that you can recall from Premier? Uh, just a blurb. I mean, I think I've been doing this for what uh, maybe for 18 years. If that was you know, it's a, this is the most brutal event in Napa Valley. I mean, if you're in one business and uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a trade, this is crazy. I mean, this is those parties, the tastings, it, it, it's just incredible. And, uh, and those wines are, are, are just uh, fantastic as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, kind of give you like a little of an of um, idea of what is to come, you know, and uh, 2011, so I'm really uh, looking forward to, uh, to, uh, to do a lot of testing. Uh, the next couple of days, just because I want to see and uh, how bad or how good, you know, is it, uh, 2011. And, you know, this is Napa Valley. I mean, I don't think, you know, if you make bad wine in Napa Valley, you should, you know, get the fuck out of here. You know, so, seriously. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's not France. This is an that's online not, show. We can you, know, that's, uh, you know, so, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's going to be very interesting, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to do that again. And uh, definitely with uh, the ugly testing, uh, my favorite testing overall. I mean, that's uh, uh, to me, it's better than the the, the one auction. Yeah. The for my, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, just for the trade, for for what I do mm -hmm. for a living, uh, uh, the the uh, Premier Napa Valley is the, the best thing. Mm -hmm. Really good. Now, what you didn't tell me is like the dirt. Like, I want to know, like, what was the best party that you went to in the history of Premier? Mm -hmm. uh, usually, or... like, I don't remember anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm that so involved, involved tequila and a luge. 
Did you go to that uh, one? Yeah, and about Luke? three years ago. Um, I, I don't know if I want like a ice sculpture. Oh, you must. And know. he had all these really high-end tequilas. <laughs> That must have been Steve Reynolds. Mm, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> was that us? No, no, yeah. no. Really? No. Yeah. Because uh, that's what we do every year. Last you really? Year, yeah, last year we rented out La Condesa and we had a beautiful party. And we did. We always have the luge. I, I know. Oscar's my partner on number one. So. <laughs> but how many yeah. do you experience? I was impressed with that. Tequila luge. You know, like, not me. This is where the beverage worlds collide. So, you, know? you know what's amazing? It's amazing. The white guy had to teach the renteria something. I just, I'm just putting it out there. Oh, really? <laughs> Wait, what did you teach him? The illusion. Well, he actually. He didn't know. We're talking well, about he, Oscar he, Renteria. He, he, Oscar, oh, he's my best buddy. So yeah. we're okay. kidding. Okay. We're, Oscar, come we're on. Oh, Oscar never saw, uh, never saw snow before? Huh? No, no. Did there no snow or? No, you know. actually, he, he might have skied once. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there are some lavish parties, and as you can see, they do get fun. Um, there's been some wonderful parties where the entire bar was an ice block with uh, caviar and, mm -hmm. and vodka, etc. And uh, so, um, along with wine. Now, I have to let you know, every single party, and we won't call them parties, we'll call them tastings, because that's really what they are, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, to be official about it. Um, should some partying happening happen along the way? Probably, um, but uh, let's face it—you can only drink wine so long during the day. We all need, we all need a yeah. refresher. So. And 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 the one thing is like for sure is like you know if you come to do that you know you definitely need to have a driver. I mean oh, again sure. I mean oh like, but, no, but yeah. really the, truly the, yeah. the things start at ten o'clock in the morning and yeah. you're up right. and ready until one or oh, two yeah. o'clock in the morning. Right, I mean this right. is like you know like fourteen fifteen day. hours, it's and uh, you definitely <laughs> need to have like you know take your time drink a lot of water. Yeah. Uh, this, this is, no, this it is isn't, I mean, even yeah. then, even if you do, I mean, obviously, oh, yeah, you of spit, course. It's, yeah, still, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a long, it's awesome. a long day. It's yeah. a long day. It is a long day. And yeah. that, after three days, I mean, your gums are bleeding, you know. <laughs> just like, ah, so, I see, so, you know, you all can't wait to enter the wine trade now, can you? Uh, I don't have to be sexy. Gums. But uh, yeah, <laughs> this is true, though. I mean, this is like, this is brutal. I mean, this is, this, this is a crucible of wine tasting. Yeah. yeah. This is like, you know, it really is. is yeah. But I have to say, for the sake of the magazine, um, what we're talking about is so fantastic with these wines, but there's so much preparation that goes into the event. Yes. And that's all part of this. Yeah. It's exactly. all part of you understanding what this job and this world is like, because mm -hmm. we're Absolutely. talking about parties, but I guarantee you there's about three months of preparation, oh, yeah. planning, or more. Yeah. cleaning, organizing, ordering glasses, which is all part of the industry, too. So to kind of wrap the two together, yeah, if I sure. could... Um, it's always nice to end it with a nice little celebration of a tasting. I keep going back to that word. <laughs> Being the host and the chair this year, I have to use the appropriate terminology. So. <laughs> no, absolutely. And one other thing I wanted to shout out for those of you who are locals that are here, even visitors to the Napa Valley this week, um, I'm going to consult my notes, but the Vintners worked really hard with local restaurants to create some 100% Napa Valley by the glass wine list that are going on through Sunday, February 24th. So if you want to have an opportunity to, you know, even just taste some great Napa Valley wines from some of our local vintners, um, you know, come up here to the Valley and you can get a great experience doing that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah. And the wineries aren't particularly overly crowded. I don't want you guys to think that Napa is so slammed because um, some of these parties are somewhat remote or not on the winery facility. Yeah. So you need to understand that the wineries are actually kind of quiet. It's a great time. The weather's fantastic. You need to come up and see it. That's true. That's, that's I'm looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at this camera. And, and, and Steve, you, 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 you're really right, you know, because this is Did really... Is not pointing to that camera? Am I doing the wrong... Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I looking? You told me this You're getting camera. a behind the scenes look at two social clubs. But, yeah. but Steve, you, you, you're right. I mean, that's a, uh, this, this is less crowded than the, the, the one auction. This is less oh, yeah, crowded sure. than the. Uh, this this yeah. is trade. This is really yeah. the, the, the trade. That, and that's why people should go into the, the beverage industry mm -hmm. because those are some of the perks that, yeah. uh, that uh, can arise if you're good. Yeah. And uh, I feel um, special. If I feel feel special. Oh my gosh, I can't speak English. I feel special every time <laughs> I get wine. to go to premiere. I do. I do. It's yeah. one of those events. I'm like, I oh, I get yeah. to go. I know yeah. I can't speak. Um, but I do. It's yeah. it's uh, it has a good energy, and you do. It feels Great. like, you know, there's something different about than any other event, and I, it's just like this. Yeah. Kind of this is my my favorite event. It is mine. I mean, it's my favorite. Event. Awesome. <laughs> good. Well, I hope I hope that again, it's a huge success, and I hope that you all. Uh, some of you out there will perhaps get to taste one of these 
spectacular, one of a kind um, wines that are are made at Premier. Well, at least you can go back to uh, Steve Reynolds. At least we know that he's going to have five cases. Exactly. Right? Yeah, he, he's somewhere. hiding him. He's hiding him <laughs> yeah, in, in the talking. cellar somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, before we close, because we got a few more minutes um, this evening, and and we're gonna, I'm gonna wander slightly off topic now, just to have a little chit chat about this, but especially because we have a winemaker in our presence. Have um, I talked enough? No, <laughs> of course not. So there was a little bit of news today that went out um, about a winery that's actually um, submersing their wine in the Atlantic Ocean over the next three months. It's been done before that. To see how it's going to age. I know, but they're actually going to do an experiment. You know, of course, shipwrecks and like, whatnot. Did you did know. Like, but did you dagger know that uh, died you know, a few years back? You know, mm -hmm. was doing that. That was one uh, of the I didn't realize very that. first uh, experiment. Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, anyway, they're trying it again. So um, I, I, I'm sorry. The name of the winery is escaping me, but um, Gustavo Gonzalez, who was formerly with Robert Davi Winery, is mm -hmm. not a winemaker there. I want to say it's like Mills or... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll have to look it up. I apologize, but um, maybe we can get them to come on and talk a little bit about right. that yeah, because they're going to pull yeah. it out of the ocean in, you know, three months and see awesome. what's happened to it, you know, do a little experiment with it and, you know, Fantastic. see if it's changed at all. So I thought that was kind of cool. I, I, I was just reading about that today. All to do with the little massage, you know, the, the, the current coming up and moving the bells, like erecting it with it. It's like, uh, yeah, what was yeah, his name? Ocean uh, massage. Yeah. Right. That used to play uh, classical music all the time. Um, over at the Luna, was uh, he? He felt that the music, classical music, played twenty four seven. Oh, uh, cool! Oh, it wasn't Mike Trash or no? no? I'm blank. Yeah. Anybody? Uh, John Consgard. Consgard. Thank oh, you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. Yeah. That was amazing. Uh, <laughs> you know, I should have known that. I should have known that. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. You know, and again. You know what? It's uh, whether you have a lucky rabbit's foot, whether you have uh, whatever, does. whatever. I'm like, I don't know if you want to do that right now. <laughs> no, but please finish. No, yeah. no, I'm just saying we all, it's like, you know, why is this, okay. let's just go a beverage, let's say hot chocolate better or or not than uh -huh. this one. Is it that hint of cinnamon or spice or whatever it is, nutmeg that you, your grandmother handed down? Why is this apple pie better than this one? Or in your eyes, right? Right, yeah. right. No one ever gets it right, and so hence, which ocean would it be in? Right, the Atlantic. Atlantic. Yeah, thinking, <laughs> exactly. Does it like maybe you're thinking? Oh, no, look at the damn camera! I am focused now. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that was so <laughs> there. I'm turning. I'm turning. <laughs> Just turn your back to us. It's okay. <laughs> you put me over here. I know. I'm sorry. No, but I mean, so you're saying you're, are, are you saying you're going to submerge uh, some bottles in the Pacific as a challenge? Just to see if the versus Pacific, the Atlantic? That's a good idea. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Just before I get sued for saying there. I'm going to do something that I'm not. Um, <laughs> Maybe we can. I say a lot of things, I know. I'm <laughs> probably not proud of all of them. No, but it's cool. I, I wanted yeah. to bring that up because I think yeah, it goes into the idea of, you know, you guys are always experimenting with what, what the next, you know, premier lot right. is going to be. And um, obviously you're trying something new. Yeah. And, you know, that's just another, another example of how the industry continues to, like, move forward and sure. test new things yeah. and experiment and um, try to come up with new ways of doing things. Yeah. Right? Really because that's how we all move forward. Always striving to do better, you know. Always yeah. don't don't settle for status quo. Um, you know, um just because this has won all these wonderful awards. You have to go do that again over there, Susan. So I, can follow it. I need to know which camera I'm going to. Uh, yeah, yeah, that works perfect. Um, so, you know, to me, I, I, you know, for myself, just because a textbook says something yeah. doesn't make it right. No, for sure. And, um, you know, it, it's always going to be changing. Our palates are how we're stimulated in life is changing every moment. And well, what's something else that we'd all like to see change in the wine business? We just talked about making it easier and not just the wine business, excuse me, I'll say the drinks business because what you guys yeah. are doing is about the drinks, drinks business. business. It's not just wine. Yeah. Um, and so, and the show isn't just about wine. It's about cocktails and tech and all kinds of things. So, you know, what's another thing that all of you out there would like to see change about the drinks business? It'd be really interesting to hear that. Um, go ahead and tweet those questions to at Toot Social with the hashtag five o'clock, beginning with the number five, and tell us what you think um, should change. How, how about you guys? Is there anything else that's been on your mind at Mutineer or otherwise? 
Um, it's okay. <laughs> like, don't don't be afraid. Are, do you guys have advertising? I'd like to there know that. No, uh, yes, we do. As a matter of fact, we're like, I'll get you media kit. <laughs> so, uh, so tell us more about that because I'm sure there's probably professionals that are listening right now. So, what, uh, as a professional in the business myself, you know, how do I become a part of this? And uh, other than donating time or getting on the board or writing mm -hmm. an article, what exactly. what could I do to be a part of it? You know, I, I think that um, the biggest thing would be to help us spread the word. Um, you know, I think you and I need to have a conversation. <laughs> um, um, so it, it sounds like um, he would be great. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just, uh, you know, if people, you know, are interested, it would be amazing if they got in touch. Um, and, uh, you know, then we could start the conversation and, you know, see, uh, like, we want to know what people in the industry want to see in these books. And, you know, on the flip side, we'd also like to know, what millennials want to see in these books um you know like you know there you know, you know there are a lot of students out there that are you know looking to choose a major and you know what kind of information do they want so all of this is is really helpful so, so is there now job postings and things that you can go to the website where there'll be job postings i'm just <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying to cover your, your face is pretty <laughs> oh, hi. As is that, no. <laughs> but is that something coming up possibly? Um, that is a spectacular idea <laughs> No, we oh, the new new <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we started an event calendar recently, yes. trying to keep track of what's going on in the industry. There's a great section of Mutineer that talks about events, and um, we happen to have an opportunity to go to these amazing events and experience them and then share it back to the readers of Mutineer. Mutineer right. is a nationally distributed magazine, right. and, so, um, and it's all beverages, so it's a really great way to kind of see what's happening in, in the world of beverage. And that's what Drink Careers is. It's going to really take Mutineer to the next level and make it a little bit more educational mm -hmm. and bring it in a way that, you know, it's is in a, not a textbook format. It's, it's going to be real. And I think that's what will really resonate with exactly. millennials, is that authentic, um, authentic, Authentic. Authentic. I'm having Authentic. issues talking. Thank you. Oh, it's Authentic. Authentic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. You know, it's it's good. Good. It's good. It's good. I'm like, it's 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 an authentic voice. And that's, that's what, you know, yeah. Munir does really well. And that's why it's something like this is going to just soar. So our, our, our goal Absolutely. is to really connect the industry and millennials. And well, will there be a job page as well as a, you know, I know a lot of people already do that. Are you going to partner with somebody on a job page in addition job to listing? the other well, Like a job listing. Yeah. I mean, one. As you get, I can't really elaborate on that. But, um, <laughs> Top secret, people. Stay tuned. Yeah. But maybe we might Craig. have talked to someone. I know Craig. Craig of Craigslist? Yes. Do you? Oh. Yes. Did you oh. stop seeing that movie? Yeah. Yeah. He was in that movie. Yeah. I love <laughs> that there's actually a Craig. Yeah, you know? yeah there's a whole movie. Craig, Craig. Hi, Craig. <laughs> so it sounds like more to come on that front. You yes. guys have a lot of ideas planned. But initially, right now, we have to get it off the ground, people. Yes. So come on. It's, it's starting <laughs> here, and it's, it has, you know, it's, it's right. exponential. I mean, it, has, it can go anywhere. And, you know, right. this is where it is too sweet. We can have the conversation and keep doing it and uh, exactly. more five o'clock somewhere. I'm okay with that. Five o'clock somewhere. We named <laughs> it after this entire project pretty much. We're all in we're all in it with you. Yes, thank you. And yeah. we're with you too sweet. We're yeah. with you too sweet. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Steve is really, she really right, right there. <laughs> Yeah, Steve, okay, yeah. We're Susan. Susan, you need to go back there. So, so, I'm going to wear um, dark glasses we, next time. That's what I'm going to do. start a Kickstarter fund for a red light that tells people <laughs> the pointing is just not yeah. working. I think anyway, that might be a good idea. We Ruben, can't right? afford media training, so when people come, <laughs> we just yell at them. Okay? Or flash so, them. Yeah, we, I, I, like yeah I was doing that, and that's why Steve was looking at the camera. But I don't. <laughs> I only do it like that much. No, it wasn't very provocative. Yeah, right. It was just kind of shocking. Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, thank you all for, for watching tonight, for participating with your tweets. We love reading them. We love seeing the questions. And uh, we are hoping that you'll join us again next time, which will be as close as tomorrow night at 5 o'clock, of course, <laughs> for the next show. But in the meantime, um, thanks to uh, Steve with Premier Nap Valley. Thanks to our guests from Mutineer, both <laughs> Ashley Teplin and Aaron. Aaron J. J. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's the Yeah, thank exactly. you. As well as our lovely uh, <laughs> host, <laughs> who, who was very quiet back here tonight, uh, Christine I'm never Price. quiet. Uh, <laughs> she was yeah. tweeting a lot. Nice. So that's not Yay. technically quiet. <laughs> so thank you all. We hope to see you again here tomorrow Love at 5 o'clock. And again, <laughs> thanks to our sponsors, St. Supery and Riedel Glassware. And we'll be back with more next time on Cheers. 5 o'clock. Cheers. 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 To the beverage industry. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
Cheers. Thank Salud. You. Salud. <laughs> Where's my glass? Oh. I don't know. Where is your glass, Spencer? Water. Water. Oh, you're hydrating. You have a fine beverage. <laughs>